Hey. Hi guys, Ed Budd here, and it's time for some more running news. <music> Story one today, there's actually been some racing going on with some very interesting results actually. Now, I've had to research into this quite a bit to get all of the details just right. So British runner Beth Potter, she's recently broken the 5K road record, but she may not have. It's all very confusing, this stuff. So it's unofficial and it's yet to be ratified. They broke that women's record 14 minutes and 41 seconds. It's just amazing. Although I did read that someone had got a slightly better time. I don't quite understand this. People were saying that it was some sort of record. So what happened there? Was it the super shoes? There was a lot of talk about the fact she'd worn those new Asics shoes. Seemed like a very small 5K competition. There were different heats uh, with different sort of target times. I think she was in the seventh group that took on the distance. I mean, everything else about it seems legitimate, although apparently there weren't drug testers there, and I think there was a couple of other caveats. There had to be certain things in place, and they may not have been there, so yeah, it's all very odd. Maybe she's just been training really hard and is at the peak of physical fitness. I think the 5K road record and the 5K track record became separate in January of 2018. And there's lots of indecision as to whether they're gonna ratify the record or not, whether it's just gonna remain as an unofficial one. Either way, an absolutely stonking time. Well done, Beth Potter. Another record, this time from a Kenyan runner. So Ruth Chepnetic lowered that half marathon women's record. I think she knocked off like 29 seconds or something. She had a winning time, one hour, four minutes and two seconds in that Istanbul half marathon run last weekend. These ladies have produced some absolutely staggering times. You know, in their chosen distances and events, it really has to be commended. But for some reason, women just seem to receive less plaudits for these superb times. In fact, there was quite a lot of really unnecessary comments about Beth Potter, how it was, you know, it was the shoes or there was some problem with the distance or something like that. Hmm, I'm giving you some plaudits here, ladies, for all that hard work that you put in. Those early mornings, I particularly find it very difficult to get out. I just want to eat my breakfast and enjoy the peace and quiet too much. So well done, both. Story two. 2021 has already seen some absolutely fantastic shoes and we're only in April. I really do hope that the Pegasus 38 adds to that list of great shoes. I love a good Nike daily shoe, but the Pegasus 37 really didn't deliver for me. Though the only changes that we'll see in the Pegasus 38 are all things that I felt were wrong with the 37. So first off, a larger toe box. Yes, Nike, yes. There's a new midfoot webbing system. Hopefully no spiders have been harmed in the making of that one. It promises a better lockdown that was, yeah, pretty much non-existent for me in the Pegasus 37. I just struggled with it. I tried all sorts of things, different laces, taking the insoles out, it just, was a rubbish lockdown, I'm afraid. The mesh material on the 37 as well, it just felt kind of synthetic and plasticky. Apparently they've got a much softer mesh on this new version and a standard separated tongue, rather than the booty type construction that we found in the 37. Apparently it's gonna be more padded as well. When I tried to lock down the 37 over the top of my foot, I just felt the laces digging in. It wasn't a particularly enjoyable sensation. Hopefully this padding will alleviate that problem and leave it in the past. So I think my to-do list on the next version of the Pegasus is pretty much all cleared. Spot on, Nike, spot on. Same midfoot and outsole unit here, so maybe I'll be able to make a bit more use of that Zoom Air section in the front of the shoe. I think this one drops in Europe on the 15th of April, so very soon I'll be looking to get my mitts on it. If you're in North America, you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer. It's out on the 22nd of April. I think Nike have mentioned there's gonna be a custom buy you option available on the Pegasus 38, so you'll be able to create your own custom variant of this new daily shoe. I think there's a flies option as well, which Nike seems to add to all the daily stuff of recent time. I've already seen there are some kids versions of this released over here in the UK already. I expect a price of around about 115 Earth credits for the Pegasus 38. Let me know if you're gonna pick that one up down in the comments. Story three. Is it me or are basketball shoes looking more and more like running shoes every day? Nike have unveiled a new low top basketball shoe and I instantly looked at it and thought, looks like a running shoe. It's called the Air Zoom GT Cut. Now the Zoom Air all over this shoe. Let's get to it. So 
you've got a full length zoom air unit in the strobel board so i think they're calling it like a air zoom strobel board but also an air zoom unit in the heel of the shoe now the really crazy thing about this shoe is it has a drop-in react midsole so not a react midsole as such it's actually this piece that you can take out it's removable just looks like a gigantic insole basically it's really weird i know nike have done this previously going back a few years in a few basketball models but it's the first time i've seen it in recent time obviously basketball requires some serious impact reduction and absorption and support as well around the heel but we got another low cut model here rather than one of those high top style shoes with loads of padding and cushioning around the ankle. I mean, you look at some of the Jordan shoes, you look at the LeBrons as well, and they really do creep up around the ankle, lots of padding. Nike seem to be moving away from that a little bit. That Zoom Freak 2 and also the Kyrie models, they've all seen Nike experimenting with those low cut style profiles and the Adapt BB2 as well, that self lacing shoe. Let's not forget the Mamba either, which is probably as close to a running shoe as you're gonna get in a basketball model. I reckon we'll see some of the technologies that they're using here in this new basketball model creeping into some running shoes as we go. I mean, we keep seeing that in like the LeBron 17 and 18. There's massive air units in here. Like you always seem to be throwing things into a cauldron and seeing what pops out. I mean, these LeBron 17s are probably one of the most cushioned shoes that I've got. And that's thinking about all of my running shoes too. Story four. Last but not least, and with tongue firmly in cheek on this one, Adidas have released a customised version of their Ultra Boost DNA shoe. It's called the DNA X Lego. There's even a Lego system style insole in this one. That bright yellow that you get. It's wonderful. Although, thinking about it, why would you want to feel like you're stepping on Lego? Anyone that's done that will know. It's a painful experience. So these feature plastic strips on the three stripes on the sides of the shoes and you can actually affix Lego to them. I think it comes with a whole set of Lego bricks so you can start creating straight out the box. You could perhaps build yourself a DIY stride pod or maybe even build yourself some type of gel holder or something on the side of your shoe. I love the fact they've incorporated the Lego section into the three stripes. I think that really, really works well. Although I think a bit more prominent Lego branding would have made this one a little bit more interesting, a little bit more fun. It is there on the tongue, but it's quite subtle. This Boost model they've used seems closer to that of the Ultra Boost from 2018 and 2019 than anything. It does make that shoe a little lighter as well. The current models, the last two years, have been very heavy. Adidas have done loads of collaborations recently. I remember seeing some Star Wars related shoes. That was a cool X-Wing version that I did try and pick up, but they never had it in my size. This one sadly is sold out aside from the kids ones which aren't quite as cool. They've got some Lego pieces on the back that you can build on top of. Sadly missing those three stripe Lego stud sections. Just a bit of fun that one, I thought you might enjoy it. Okay, that's all the running news for today. Musical interlude time. Apple Music placed this one up on the screen for me to check out as like a recommendation. It comes from the Super Furry Animals and it's their live at the BBC album released in 2018. Focus Pocus Decibel is just wild and crazy and a complete departure from some of the other stuff that Super Furry Animals produced over the years. Hometown Unicorn is a personal favourite of mine. I really love the chorus refrain. It sounds a little bit like a pavement track, actually. I don't know if they were aiming for that. I mean, these guys were knocking out tunes around about the same time, or at least around the same time as Steve Maltmus's solo material started. There's a beautiful version on here of If You Don't Want Me To Destroy You, a really airy vocal. It sounds really laid back. The band sound really calm and at ease. The version of Fire In My Heart on this album sounds almost like a Beatles kind of offcast. You know, that they produced and somebody found it on a tape. It's even got a sort of slap back echo on the vocal. A little bit like you would hear on a John Lennon track. Do go and check this one out, guys. The Super Furry Animals, live at the BBC. Right, cool cats. Time for me to rock and roll out of here. So I'm going to get my long run done for the day. Thanks for watching through to the very end, guys. I very much appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications so you can be notified when we launch a new video. It really helps the channel out as well, that YouTube algorithm magic. If you give this video a thumbs up like and also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.